So we're almost through with uh, the book of Oikos. Some of the Oikos already finished. Some of uh, like uh, we are working in in the last chapter, and uh, this chapter is one of the last. Uh, I think it's before the last one. The spirit feel life. The spirit feel life, and. Uh, as you can see, the subtitle, God's Power in You. Okay, God's Power in You. So I've been touching the same subjects as the book, but uh, with, with a different direction. So it can be different from what you went through, what you can read in the book. Like, uh, for example, the book is not like the one that we are going to, be uh, going through that is a comparison of doctrines okay so this one doesn't doesn't get into comparing doctrines and especially when it comes to the doctrine of the holy spirit okay the spirit field life which is the the doctrine that is nowadays being distorted and destroyed fully and completely by the Pentecostal charismatics move faith movement they they're that's that's the main doctrine that they uh, preach that they practice but completely out of whack okay so the book the only thing that does is just to uh, give us a statement this is what it says here in page 222 okay in page 222 it says due to the abuses and excesses we may have observed we may be skeptical even fearful of where a discussion about the fullness of the spirit will lead okay that's what the writers of the book that's what they in page 222 they make this uh, statement okay but in reality but they don't get into the comparison of uh of the the way non charismatics believe and the way that charismatics believe they don't go into that they just go like every chapter they just go in in the uh, conservative way the biblical way using only the foundation of the bible for every teaching that's all they do but they don't make the comparison so i'm gonna have to you know make a little bit of comparison okay so that we can understand better for example i want you to answer this question is the baptism of the holy spirit different from being filled with the holy spirit yes or no it is very critical your 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 the way you see it okay your answer it shows a lot about your doctrine. Hmm? It shows about, a, about a, oh, so many things that I want you to think about this. Is the baptism of the Holy Spirit different from being filled with the Holy Spirit? What do you think? No? Okay, if you think that is, the answer is no, it's because you tend to be charismatic more than uh, conservative, okay? And that's the problem. That's the problem with the, the charismatic Pentecostal, that they don't see any difference. When doctrinally, theological, woof, there's a big difference. Hmm? There's a big difference. Do you think there is a difference between uh, positional and practical? Do you think there's a difference? A huge difference between positional and practical, right? And that's what we're talking about here, the difference between positional and practical. That's why I keep repeating, repeating that word, because it is important that that word is key in doctrine, in theology, to understand the difference between what is positional, what is practical. Hmm. So I keep repeating and repeating, and this is, this is something that you're going to have to, you're going to learn in depth in the Oikos book. That's why I'm encouraging you to attend an Oikos, because if you say, 
Well, I'm not going to. Think. I'm just going to buy the book. And that's all what you're going to do. You're just going to buy the book. You're not going to go through the book. You're not going to go through uh, arguments. You're not going to go through the enrichment that you can have when you are in a group arguing, discussing, putting your, your perspective, sharing its perspective. And, and we get enriched by that, by being in a, in a small group talking about a subject and making sure that we understood doctrinally what we really l believed because it, it is it, it is very dangerous to say oh i don't believe in this i don't believe in that and then when they ask you things like this you say oh yeah i believe in that okay so you're charismatic then it's the same way that I go through, for example, through a Catholic and I say, well, the Catholic Church believe this. I don't believe that. And the Catholic Church believe that. I don't believe in that. So you're not Catholic then. If you don't believe everything that, that the Catholic believes, then you're not a Catholic the same way. Do you believe this? Oh, yeah, I believe there's no difference between the baptism of the Holy Spirit and being filled with the Holy Spirit. There's no difference. Okay, so, so in reality, you're not a conservative. A conservative, you are a charismatic. You're a Pentecostal, if you believe that. Because doctrinally, the way that we believe, that we have always believed, that's what, it, what we mean by conservative, that we have preserved the um, sound doctrine, that we haven't changed it, okay? And, and so we see there is a huge difference, okay? And let me go through that so that you can, and, and I'm just gonna, just gonna give you the, the superficial, but if you get it into Oiko's book, then you're gonna go in depth, okay? That it's important for you to always go in depth in every doctrine, in every uh, subject that we have in the Bible, don't be content with just learning just the introduction. Just the introduction. That sometimes that happens. You buy a book and then you just read the first chapter or the introduction. The first chapter you say, oh, now I understand it. No. That was only the beginning. In order for you to say, now I understand that. Finish the whole book. Hmm? And then you can say, now I understand it. Hmm. All right, so it is different, okay? It is different. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. Why? Because the baptism in the Spirit, okay, the baptism in the Spirit, it is permanent and it happens at conversion, okay? It is not repeated, okay? It's not repeated. It's not repeated, okay? So it's different. Now, the, uh, the feeling with the Spirit, okay, uh, is after conversion, okay, and it should be repeated. You see the difference? Hmm? One is at conversion, and the other one is after conversion. The first one, this one, is not repeated. It's a positional work of God. Mm? And the other one is the practical work of God. Mm? All right, so I'm, I'm going to keep explaining this so that you can understand it. Let me show you one of the verses that tells us about the uh, spirit baptism, what it is. It's 1 Corinthians 12, 13. It says here, the Apostle Paul is speaking to a congregation that is mixed. And he's saying, among us, here in the congregation, some are Jews and others are not, or, the, or they're Gentiles. Some are slaves and some are free people. But we were all, okay, Jews, Gentiles, slaves, free. We were all baptized by the same Holy Spirit to form one church and one body. God gave each of us the same Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit. So now, do you see here the baptism with the Holy Spirit that is at conversion? Hmm? We were all baptized by the same Holy Spirit. Hmm? 
That's the moment of conversion when we were born again. And now we are in Christ and we are part of his body, the body of Christ. Now we are part of the church of Jesus Christ. Why? Because now we have the Holy Spirit living in us. And that happens at conversion, right? That's when we receive the Holy Spirit, right? At conversion. And, and it's at conversion that we become part of the body of Christ, the church, the, the universal, the, the real church of Christ, the church that Jesus is going to come and, and, and he's going to uh, rapture, pick it up. Mm. All true believers are going to be rapture. That's the, the church that we became part of at the moment of conversion. Okay? To that church. So, the baptism is exactly what the Bible tells us. Now, uh, the baptism of the Spirit is permanent. Okay? That's why we, we believe that you cannot lose your salvation. It's permanent, right? That bestowing of the grace of God upon us in adopting us as His children mm, and giving us His Holy Spirit is permanent, right? Can we lose that? No, it's permanent. Okay? And it happens on conversion and it's not repetitive. It's not going to happen again and again and again, right? You're not going to lose your salvation and then you're going to have to uh, once again be baptized by the Holy Spirit. Say, okay, the Holy Spirit is going to say, Oh, Sergio, you got out from Christ. Now you're not in Christ. Let me do it again, the work. And now again, I'm going to baptize you into the body of Christ. Now you're born again, again. You're now part again, again of the, of the, the body of Christ, the church. Okay, so just stay there. Please don't, don't do crazy things, okay, because then we're going to have to go over. No, it's not like that. All those churches, they believe that, that you can lose your salvation and that, and this craziness that can happen probably every day because every day we, we, we sin one way or another. And that's what I was one day talking to a pastor and say, okay, you tell me which sins are going to cause me to lose my salvation. Oh, no, I don't want to get into that. Well, okay, so how, how do I know that if I'm going to lose my salvation? Well, I want to keep it, so I want to make sure that I don't commit those sins that, that, that can make me lose my salvation. And there's no such thing. So it is important to understand what the, the Bible tells us, the sound doctrine of the Bible. So it's not repetitive. So let's understand the words, okay, because it's important. Because it's talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, or by the Holy Spirit. The word baptism means to dip in, to immerse, completely submerge, right? So that's the symbolic idea that when we were born again, that we became Christians, the Holy Spirit got us into Christ fully, hmm? Like when you are baptized, you go fully into the water. You are completely immersed by the water, right? Submerged completely, not partially, completely. Okay, so the idea is that the Holy Spirit took us and brought us all the way into the body of Christ. Now we belong 100%. To Christ. That's why we are in Christ. Okay? We are in Christ because we were baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. And we are in Christ. All right? So we enter in complete union with Christ and His body, His church. Okay? That's the idea of a baptism by the Holy Spirit. So, do you understand why? It's one-time experience, a sovereign work of God in us, when He brings us to conversion, 
and it's not going to happen again and again and again. It's not going to happen. It's once and for all. Mm. That's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some um, uh, doctrinal statements about the meaning, okay? About spirit baptism. The first one. The baptism of the Holy Spirit may be defined as that work whereby the Spirit of God places the believer into union with Christ and into union with other believers in the body of Christ at the moment of salvation. That's a doctrinal statement. That's a doctrinal statement, it's, and it is important. That's why I always keep repeating and repeating myself. Doctrine is very important. What we believe is going to affect what we do, how we feel, how what we do. Okay? But it's important to know, to know doctrine. It's not something that, oh, this pastor bothers too much with that word. And nowadays, those churches that don't believe in doctrine, they even hate doctrine, they say, oh, no, no, we don't believe in doctrine. Okay, doctrines divide and love unites. Okay. And by love, they're, what they mean is just have feelings. Feelings, feelings, feelings and emotions. Feelings and emotions. That's love. Feelings and emotions. Okay, so this is a doctrinal statement. All right, let's read it again. The baptism of the Holy Spirit may be defined as that work whereby the Spirit of God places the believer into union with Christ. That's why when we talk about being born again, we say, oh, the Holy Spirit work on me. Yeah, and it's the Holy Spirit that places the believer, that's the baptism he places, brings us in. To Christ in union with Christ and in union with other believers in the body of Christ at the moment of salvation okay at the moment of salvation and and this is just the baptism of the Holy Spirit it is a fulfilled promise Jesus before before he was even uh, crucify and resurrected starting with John the Baptist John the Baptist mentioned that you know somebody is coming the one is coming he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit okay it was already promised by John the Baptist and then Jesus repeated the same promise you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit and uh, it happened it happened okay in in the day of Pentecost it happened now the promise was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2, 1 through 4. And for the first time, people were permanently indwelt by the Holy Spirit and the church had begun. Right? Because we don't see that before Pentecost. Hmm? But it's there. Okay? So... We have to understand what others believed. Others believe that, that we are, okay, some churches, some Pentecostal charismatic churches, they believe that we are brothers in Christ, that we are saved, but that we don't have the Holy Spirit in us because we haven't experienced the baptism with the Holy Spirit. They say you haven't, because they understand the baptism of the Holy Spirit very differently from what the Bible teaches. Okay, I'm going to show you later on what they what they believe about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, but uh, they say, okay, they are our brothers in Christ, but they just don't have the Holy Spirit. They have to really seek the Holy Spirit. In order for, for the Holy Spirit to baptize them with fire and tongues and this and all that, they, they need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's what they teach, okay? That's what they teach, that's what, that what we need. Now, others that, that probably are a little bit more 
moral, mm, consistent with what the with what the Bible teaches, they they use Romans eight nine, and they say no, Baptists and other churches that don't have the Holy Spirit, they are not saved. They are not Christians because Romans 8, 9 says, if anyone does not have the Spirit, they don't belong to Christ. That's what the Bible teaches, okay, in Romans 8, 9. So now they, they conclude, look, they're not true believers hmm, because they don't have the Holy Spirit. So you see what happens when you have wrong doctrine? Hmm? When you, don't, when you don't have the right doctrine, then you're going to go and get all confused. Hmm? And all confused. I have talked to pastors, and I can see that they go, but when I say, but what about this? And, this? and they get so nervous because all they have is confusion. Not even, not even their doctrines, not even they have them in order that they can say, no, everything is completely confused. So this is... This is what the Bible really teaches, okay? Now, at the moment of salvation, okay? At the moment of salvation, the Holy Spirit comes uh, to live in us, right? It's not that we don't have the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. If, if we repented and we were born again, the Holy Spirit lives in us. There's no such thing as a, a real Christian, but without the Holy Spirit. Because it's true, the Bible tells us that if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're, you don't belong to Christ. You haven't been baptized by the Holy Spirit. You haven't been born again, which is the same thing. You haven't been born again. Okay, You're not in Christ. That's why you don't have the Holy Spirit. And once you have the Holy Spirit, that's it. You have the Holy Spirit for good. Look what the Bible teaches. And you also were included in Christ. Every time that you see this statement, in Christ, it's in reference to the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that, that God is in Christ, brought us completely into the body of Christ, in communion, Perfect communion, 100% communion, acceptance in Christ. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Okay, When you believed, you were marked in Him. Okay, You were marked in Him. Okay? Once again, in Him. With a seal. What is that seal? The promised Holy Spirit. The one that John the Baptist promised, Jesus promised. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit. Okay? So now the Holy Spirit in us is God's seal of ownership. Sergio belongs to me. And the proof is my Holy Spirit. And like I've been telling you other, in other messages, it's like our passport to heaven. We get to the gates and you show your passport, Holy Spirit, and go in. No Holy Spirit, <laughs> go over to the other side. So it's a seal. And it's the seal of the King of Kings. And Lord of Lords, in those days, the seal of a king was the maximum authority. Okay? The maximum authority. Look, it has the seal of King David. Now, it's full authority. Whatever is that letter, that declaration is saying, you know, comes from the maximum authority. So now the Holy Spirit okay, is proof that we belong to Christ. So it is the seal of God, the Holy Spirit in us. Hmm? The seal of God. So that's why we don't believe in losing your salvation. Do you think that God is going to be removing that seal? Oh, yeah, I have to remove the seal. And you look, I, I already... Um, 
have done the, all this in your life. What? I convince you, I, uh, all the doctrines of salvation, now I have to remove them again. Once again, I, was, I had already gone through all the papers of adoption and they were already signed and everything. Now I'm going to have to remove them. Now you're not going to be adopted. Do you think that God is going to do that? In when, when we believe that you can lose your salvation? No. No. That's why it's so important to see all the doctrines that, that include salvation. All the different works of God that happen in an instant, but, but it's the work of God spiritually done in us like this, that we were sealed with the Holy Spirit as a guarantee that we belong to Him. Hmm? That we belong to Him. It's a guarantee. Now, forever we're, we guarantee. Okay? So now, let me... I already gave you some doctrinal information, so I'm going to give you a test. Okay? I want to see if you are listening and listening with understanding. Okay? Now, uh, is the, um, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, does it happen at the moment of conversion at the moment of salvation or is after salvation? At the moment of conversion. At the moment or after? Because I saw somebody, some people say after. <laughs> I'm watching you. Eh? I'm watching you. So what is it then? At the moment or after? You're sure? Sure. Okay, so you're right. Okay, you're right. But but now, now that you know that, okay, now that you know that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is at the moment of conversion, and it, it is forever, it's not going to change, it's not repeatable, okay? Let me show you what the Pentecostal Charismatics believe. They this is the, their teaching. This is their doctrine. This is the statement. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a post-salvation. You see, after salvation. That's post. After salvation experience. After someone becomes a Christian, he or she must seek diligently for the baptism of the Spirit. Those who get this baptism also experience various phenomena, such as speaking in tongues, feelings of euphoria, visions, and emotional outbursts of various kinds. Hmm? Now, do you see the difference now? What we believe and what they believe? Do you see the difference or do you still... Because, you know, I have talked to people and they say, Pastor, it's all the same. I've been in your church, I've been, I know it's all this, and the only difference is that they get excited, and, and here in your church, we don't get excited. No, it's not the same. You need to understand the difference in doctrine. It's not just the difference in practice, but it's the difference in doctrine. That's why I say, what you believe is going to affect what you feel and what you do. Okay? Because we don't believe in this, that's why we don't do this, right? Because we don't believe in that. For them, this is evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Hmm? That's evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Do you see what happens when you believe something? You're going to respond to that, to what you believe. That's why it's so important to believe the right doctrine, the sound doctrine, so that you can respond correctly, soundly, okay, soundly to life, to temptations, to all kinds of experience. You can react and respond soundly, biblically, okay. So that's why I keep insisting this coming course is key. For you to understand doctrine and the key, and especially in the area that we have 
a spiritual war right now, hmm? especially in that area. You're going to have to really get serious about. So you see, for them, it's a post-salvation experience, after salvation. That's why they can say, yeah, we consider them uh, our brothers, okay? They, they are Christians, but they don't have the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They don't have the Spirit. You see that confusion? Hmm? How can you be a Christian and not have the Spirit? If the Bible tells us that there's no such thing. Hmm? There's no such thing according to the Bible. According to the Bible, there is no such thing. Okay? So, Spirit baptism happens only one time, right? At conversion. Only one time at conversion, and it's not to be repeated, right? Amen. Now, the filling of the Spirit, okay? The filling of the Spirit is repetitive. Hmm? It's repetitive, and that is after conversion. A person that is not converted, he cannot experience the feeling of the Spirit, okay? It's only for believers, okay? The, the, the feeling of the Spirit, and it's repetitive. Let me show you the verse that speaks about this. The key verse here is Ephesians 5.18. Do not get drunk on wine, instead be filled with the Spirit. This is what the Apostle Paul is telling Christians, hmm? okay? After salvation, now you have to make sure that you are filled with the Spirit. Different from baptism of the Spirit, okay? Completely different. It's just being filled with the Spirit, okay? Being filled with the Spirit, okay? The term be filled, be filled, is often translated in the Greek as Keep on being filled. Why? Because the grammar, okay? The grammar, uh, it, is, it is written in a continual present tense. To be filled with the Spirit is telling us, hey, try to be constantly, be filled with the Holy Spirit. To be under the control of the Holy Spirit. Now, you're a Christian, right? You're a true believer. Do you always experience that you are under the control of the Holy Spirit? Or sometimes you're not under the control of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you're under the control of the flesh, right? It happens to all of us. But the Word of God, the idea is seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit. To be under the control, under the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Seek that. That's something that we should seek. Now, let's uh, look at what the filling of the Holy Spirit is. The filling of the Spirit is not permanent, but it's to be repeated again and again and again. And it's a moment by moment by moment experience. I'm confronting something. I'm going to decide if I'm going to do it according to the Spirit, according to the Word of God, according to God's will, or according to my passions, my desires, what I think is better for me at the moment. Right there, I'm going to decide if I'm going to be under the control of the Holy Spirit field or under the control of the flesh. So it's a moment by moment. That's why he says, try to, to be always under the control of the Holy Spirit. Because things are going to come constantly to your life. Test. We're always being tested. Tempted. Trials. Tribulations. And they're going to come suddenly. So be ready spiritually. Hmm? By being filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, as a drunk... Because this is the example that Paul is using, writing to the Ephesians in, in Ephesians 5.18. As a drunk is saturated and under the control of alcohol, so we are to live saturated and under the control of the Holy Spirit. 
The same thing, that's, that's the example that he's giving, okay? He's saying, look, when you're drunk, you're full of alcohol, and you're under the control of alcohol. But I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to live like that. On the contrary, I want you to be full of the presence of God, full of His Word, so that you can be controlled by the Word of God, by the will of God, by the Spirit of God. Because the Spirit of God is the author of the Word of God. So they are always going to work together. They're always going to work together. So this is what the Bible is telling us. Now, the filling of the Holy Spirit, it is to live continually under the influence of the Spirit by letting the Word control, control you. And I'm giving you here the... Uh, Come so that you can read it at a home and, and compare Colossians 3.16 and Ephesians 5. Why? The, the passage that you are more familiar is with Ephesians 5.18 through 6.9. And that's where it says, where we just read, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then from there on, he's saying, look, this is God's will for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit, under the control of the Holy Spirit. And then he continues in Ephesians, giving us a picture of how a person looks and his behavior when he is under the control of the Holy Spirit. And then he tells us, look, his conversation is going to be edifying. Okay, And then he is going to have such humbleness that he's not going to have any problem in submitting. Hmm? The, the, the man is going to submit to his wife by loving her the same way that Jesus loved the church. And, and the wife is going to have such a humbleness that she's going to respect the leadership of, of her husband like if he were Christ, like if he were Christ. He's going to do that because she's under the control of the Holy Spirit. And then he says, and, and, and the, ch the children, those that live with their parents, if they are filled with the Holy Spirit, now they are going to, to honor their parents. They are going to obey their parents. They are going to respect their parents. And the parents... If they are filled with the Holy Spirit, they are going to raise their children, teaching them the Word of God, the right way to live. They're going to be teaching. They're not going to be bugging them so that they will be uh, frustrated with their parents. And then he says, and when you go to work, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're not going to be working for your boss. You're going to be working for Christ. And, and if you are the owner, if you're the manager, the supervisor, then you're going to be treating the employees like if they were Christ. And so that's in Ephesians 5.18. Now, the letter of Ephesians was written first, then Colossians. And after a few months or probably a year later, he wrote Colossians. And he reminded the Colossians something that they already knew because the letters, they, they, they were circulating in all the churches. They were circulating. They would make copies and circulate them in all the churches. So they had already learned this, what I just explained to you about the feeling of the Holy Spirit, how a person looks, he behaves when he's filled with the Holy Spirit. But now he mentions it in Colossians 3, but he makes it just a summary because he knows that they already have. But now he makes a clarification okay, here so that we may not get the feeling of the Holy Spirit to be something just mystical. That, oh, the Holy Spirit is going to come in me. Ooh, now I'm going to 
No, he's saying it's something practical because in Colossians he says, let the word of God live in you abundantly. And then after that, He's gonna, he, he goes on and says exactly the same thing in Ephesians. This is the way that a person that the word of God lives in him abundantly is going to look. And he goes through the same fruits, the same behavior. Okay? So understand that the feeling of the Holy Spirit, you see, let me go. A spirit-filled lifestyle is not something that you can generate. It is allowing your life to be fully controlled, influenced, and saturated by God's Word. Do you understand the practicality of that? Of being filled with the Holy Spirit? You see the importance of the Word of God? Always understand that the Word of God and the Holy Spirit... They're inseparable. They are inseparable. That's why I say, oh, I need to understand the Word of God. I need to ask the Holy Spirit to, to give me illumination, to give me understanding, to give me insight into His Word. Because He is the author of the Word. We need to always put it at the same level. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit at the same level. Don't, don't you never be uh, amazed or... The Holy Spirit, the author of the Word? Isn't God the author? He is God. The Holy Spirit is God. The Son is God. The Father is God. So don't be afraid to say that the Holy Spirit is the author of the Word. Because he is God. So here, understand that a spirit-filled lifestyle is not something that says, no, oh, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. No. It is allowing your life to be fully controlled, influenced, saturated by God's word. When when you are saturated, influenced, controlled by God's word. Another way of putting it is, you have the mind of Christ. And when you have the mind of Christ, that means that you think like Christ, then you feel like Christ, and you act like Christ. Right? And that's what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, do you see that is nothing mystical about it? And when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, even in Galatians tells us, and this is also the way, these are the virtues that are going to be in your character. This is going to be also part of your behavior, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the, the evidence that the Holy Spirit lives in you. Okay, and let me show you this, walking through Galatians 5, 16 to chapter 6, 10. You can study it at home, but being spirit-filled means that I refuse to let my flesh determine my choices, my habits, and my pursuits. Okay? It's not going to be me who is going to make the decisions. It's going to be the Word of God. It's going to be God's will. It's going to be the Holy Spirit using the Word of God, reminding me, convicting me. He brings the conviction. He will convince me that, hey, this is not right. The way you want to do it is not God's way. That's your way. It's not God's way. Okay? So being filled with the Spirit means that I'm easily identifiable as a Christian because my attitudes and actions are full of spiritual virtue. Okay? That's what it means. I want you to keep reading it. I want you to understand it. Because, you see, it's so different from what I show you that Pentecostal Charismatics believe 
They, they don't see any difference between the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the feeling of the Holy Spirit. They see it as one and the same. That's why I, I, I started with that question. So that you can see that there is not the same doctrinally, biblically, and that you have to have it clearly in your mind so that you don't confuse one and the other. And when a Pentecostal comes to you, a charismatic and says, have you experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit? That you know exactly what he means and that you know exactly what he's asking. Have you had that experience of falling and having the, the, the Holy Spirit leading you into speaking in tongues and having visions and all that. You know. So you can say, yeah, I have experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit at conversion. That's what the Bible did. And then you can teach. Instead of arguing and say, no, you're a bunch of crazy. and this. Uh, no. You can teach and explain what the Bible teaches, so you can teach them because they don't know, and you know already. You already know. So that's what it means. Your spirit feel and your attitudes and your actions, okay, are gonna be like Christ. Are Christ. Okay? Being filled with the Spirit means I have put to death the sinful patterns of my old life before Christ. I already died with Christ. I was crucified with Christ. I no longer live. But now the life that I live, I live in the faith of my Savior, Jesus Christ. So those sinful patterns, I don't practice them anymore. My lifestyle is not a lifestyle of practicing sin. I may fall into sin and it really hurts me, pains me, and leads me to repentance because the Holy Spirit brings conviction and leads me to repentance. It's very different from continuing in a pattern, in a pattern of, of sinning. Okay, so that's what it means to be spirit-filled, filled with the Holy Spirit. It's very different from baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, being spirit-filled means I am yielding my life to God's priorities and values. Hmm? God's priorities and values. So do you see why this is a constant practice? It should be. A lifestyle being filled with the Holy Spirit, very different from the baptism. The baptism is my position in Christ. I'm fully in Christ. I was submerged by the Holy Spirit. I was sealed by the Holy Spirit. So that's why I am secure in Christ. That's my position in Christ. But my practice is being filled with the Holy Spirit. My practice, my daily practice is being filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is what's going to happen. I have to yield to God's priorities and values. Why? Because there's always a battle between the flesh and the Spirit. So who am I going to yield to? To the flesh or to the Spirit? If I'm Spirit-filled, I'm going to yield to the Spirit, to the Word of God, to God's will. If I'm in the flesh... Of course, that I'm going to yield to my, my passions, my desires, my addictions, my bad habits. I'm going to yield to that. Hmm? I'm going to yield to that. So that's, that's the way that we can know. Am I in the spirit or am I in the flesh? And it's something that we should constantly evaluate ourselves. Because what I, the way I told you is, it's a moment by moment by moment by moment experience and decision. Okay? Being spirit-filled means I resist pride, walking humbly in God's grace. Hmm? I resist pride. And we know that it's impossible in our own, hmm? but everything is possible spiritually. Hmm? Everything is possible, so this is, this is possible. Okay? This is possible. 
Now, being filled, spirit filled means I make daily choices that please God and bring blessings to all people. To all people. Hmm. Now, do you see the difference? Is it clear? And, and like I told you at the beginning, I'm just showing you like the introduction, okay? In, in Oikos, you're going to really go in depth into this so that you, you will understand it much and much better. But this is just an introduction so that you can have mm, the begin. Always the introduction is very important. That's why I keep telling people, hey, every time that you buy a book, read the introduction. Mm -hmm. Because the introduction is a summary of everything that you're going to be reading. So when you read the introduction, you're going to be, it's going to be easier for you to understand the rest of the book. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm doing. I'm giving you an introduction so that you can understand better the rest of the book that you're going to be going through. Okay? So what about us? Are your choices full of the Holy Spirit? Because we, we have to evaluate ourselves. That's why we come to church. We don't come to be entertained. We come to be confronted by the Word of God, by the Word of God, by the teaching of the Word of God. Okay? Are your choices full of the Holy Spirit? Are you sure that it, your choices, you always have as a priority the Word of God? The Word of God, God's will, or uh, you don't care that, that's for church. Right now, this is what is convenient to me. Hmm? This is where I'm going to get a benefit. But is it God's will? What would Jesus do in this case? This is a good way of finding out what would Jesus do? Hmm? I have asked that question in, in, in uh, counseling. I said, okay, you're asking me, what should I do, Pastor? Say, what would Jesus do? Ah, well, okay, so you have the answer, okay? And that's what Jesus wants us to do the same way. You want to be like Christ? Do exactly what Jesus would do in that situation, okay? So you know, you don't even have to ask me that. Okay, how about your attitudes? Are your attitudes are show that you are under the control of the Holy Spirit, that the fruit of the Holy Spirit is in your life hmm? with your attitudes, your inner thoughts were that nobody are able to see, hear, or read. Only you know what you think, what you meditate on, your fantasies, all that. Hmm? Are they under the control of the Holy Spirit, under the control of the Word of God, or under the control of your flesh. It is important to be confronted, okay? To be confronted. Your future plans that you have, are, the, are those plans your plans or the will of God, the plan of God for your life? It's important. Okay, let's finish with a summary, okay? I'm going to give you a summary. Always, it's important to try to put it in the, a few words. The, uh, what is it? I preach for what, 20 minutes? Okay, for 20 minutes I preach. <laughs> an hour? Okay, so the summary of an hour of teaching. Spirit baptism equals salvation, right? You got that? In everything you do, I should always begin with the, the last. <laughs> but, but that's what it is. You see, that's theology. It's all the information and doctrine is the summary of, the, of theology. Hmm? That's why it's always important to begin with doctrine. And once you had a course in doctrine, now you can get into theology. Hmm? So here, spirit baptism equals salvation, okay? So this is positional, 
Okay? This is positional. While spirit feeling, the spirit feeling is sanctification. Okay? So that's the practical. That's the practical. So you see the difference? Do you see that it's not the same? No. Mm? It's not the same. It's very different. Mm? And, it's, and do you see that it's completely different from charismatic Pentecostal doctrine, teachings? Do you see that it's very different? Because some people, they don't see. I have seen people that they, they go out from this church and they go to a church that believe the other way, hmm? not this way. And when I have asked, hey, what church? This, but that church is charismatic. Oh, no, no, they, they teach the Bible. And they, yeah. Okay. It's up to you. Hmm? That's why it's so important to really learn doctrine. Now you can see the difference. Spirit baptism is about salvation. The filling of the Holy Spirit is to bring holiness, to separate us from the world, from our flesh, so that we can truly obey the Word of God, the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. That's what it is, the difference. Capiche? So let's pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this wonderful lessons that we just went through because we understand that you're a good God for you to be involved in all these details just for us that we were not even concerned about our spiritual condition we didn't care about salvation, about holiness. But then you came, Lord, and little by little you started working in us until you brought us the conviction, convinced, convinced that this is true, this is true, until you led us into a full knowledge of your Son, Jesus Christ, and saved us. And sealed us with your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we want to honor that awesome work of grace that you have done in our lives. We want to honor by living in sanctification, really allowing your Holy Spirit to have control over us through your word. Lord, help us to understand it to appreciate it and to live it out, practice it, Lord. Because we know that that's, that's the only way that we're going to bring honor and glory to you. That's the only way that people are going to see the difference in our lives. So help us, Lord, to repent. If there is something that we need to repent of, Lord, And we also want to thank you for the things that we can be thankful. Thank you, Lord, because we know that, that if we confess, if we are sincere, we, if we are honest with you, and we confess fully what you already know, but it comes from our heart, from our lips, and we say the same thing and we see the same thing that you see about us. We thank you because you're always willing and faithful to forgive us fully and to cleanse us completely from all sin. Lead us, Lord, at this moment because we want your word that was heard and that you spoke to us individually to have the cleansing effects that you desire to have in us. We thank you and we ask it in Jesus' name and for his glory. 
Amen.